Hello everyone and welcome back to my Asteroid Defense Series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode we have quite a lot to do. We've got uh, the plane changes for our four dual missions and then we need to get our our Duna mission all nice and arranged, uh, making sure that we've got in a position so that we can send the lander to Ike as well as land on Duna itself. Um, I don't know if I'll be handing, handling the landings in this episode or in the next episode, but uh, I'm actually probably going to record it all in the same session anyway, so one way or another I'm going to be landing on Duna today, or at least trying to. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at our missions here. This definitely needs a plane change, so I'm going to jump to it and see what we can do. It'll probably cost more than it would have if I did it at the right time. We passed the planned maneuver node, I think. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Here's our wonderful explorer craft with a uh, Jebediah only? I guess I only had Jeb? Because where I would have sent three Kerbals in this. Uh, I'm con oh, uh, maybe... Mm. This is wrong. I'm gonna have to look. Okay, well, whatever. I'm going to. Uh, I'm, I'm confused, but uh, let's let's get this underway. This is clearly not an acceptable path. We should have done our plane change way over here, and that's not good. Okay, I think that's good enough. Uh, so trying to get 488 kilometers away from Joule, which will still be outside of its atmosphere, so we'll still make the critical adjustment once we get into the Joule sphere of influence. Okay, now I'm just going to do the burden here because I'm not going to want to wait four hours, otherwise our Duna mission might be out of place. Okay, that's good enough. 328 is fine. Uh, before I jump to the other three missions, which are all unmanned, let me go back to the astronaut complex to see what's up with with Bill and Bob. Okay, so they're in the lab. I guess their portraits don't show up when they're in the lab? Is that right? That's a bit weird. Okay, well as long as this shows that they're present on the Explorer, then that's fine. Uh, we haven't lost anybody. We've, uh, we've only got Harbury uh, available. Okay, well let's let's hire a few more people. Otherwise, we won't have enough to do any further missions. Uh, Ali Kerman. Okay. A very courageous Kearney Kerman. And I'm not confident that I can remember these names. Matt Lulkerman, I guess. Okay, so yes, let's turn to the unmanned jewel mission. Okay. From a distance, this sort of looks like the Explorer, but it's not. It's the Science Junior mission. And we need to do the plane change for it as well. Let's see how much it will cost this one. Uh, first, let's get rid of the maneuver we missed. How much would it have been back there? 176? Well, judging from the Explorer, we only did about 320. So it's not going to be too bad. Lathe Encounter. Well, that's good. But we don't really need it. Could use Lathe. Could use Lathe. To Arrow Break. Yeah, okay, let's have one of them arrow break around lathe instead. At least one of them. If we can get that lathe encounter again, please. Uh, there we are. Oh, no, Val. No, Val doesn't have an atmosphere. We can't do a Val encounter. Seems like an interesting time to be entering the dual system since we seem to be able to encounter Lathe, Val, or Tylo at will. But here uh, we are encountering Lathe, so let's try and do this burn 
precisely enough to maintain that. Except, uh, well, well, we'll see. The note is in two days, but I'm going to be doing it immediately so that I don't miss out on what our Duna mission is doing. So yeah, it seems like it was cheaper to do it out here than uh, where I had originally plotted it. So, note to self. Oh, wow, that lathe, lathe encounter is really... And I can't, I'm still spinning. Okay, RCS again. The lathe encounter is a tiny little thing. And we're using a lot of mod propellant to turn this. Uh, whatever. I'm just gonna leave it here. I, I, if we could get a life encounter from out here, I'm reasonably certain we could probably get one once we're closer in. I'll decide then what to do about that. Let's switch to the next one. Now this is the tiny little probe that definitely has to go to lathe. So we don't have any choice here. We need to get this a lathe encounter. Okay, a lathe encounter. Let me try and actually hit this one this time. 125.5 meters per second, much better than what was originally plotted. But then again, uh, that, that might be a mistake because uh, it was probably telling me how much delta V it would take to adjust to that plot instead of how much it would actually take. I'm not too sure though. Um, we don't have much fuel, so gotta get this right. Okay, there it is again. Let's try this. 3.8 meters per second. Tough to push this tiny little thing around just by that much, but it definitely calls for RCS. Lathe encounter. Okay, so we have our lathe encounter. Last but not least, the goo launch. There it is, all nice and green. So far our miss of the plan plane changes actually has been to our benefit. It looks like those that was the wrong time to do those. This is much better. Okay, uh, well, this is tough. For some reason this one is much more difficult than the other ones. Timing was off on this clearly. It keeps going to this other encounter which is also very annoying. I mean this isn't even an encounter. It's a bad closest approach. And finally, this one will also approach Jewel at 492, so let's try that. Should be able to get close to that. Not much reaction wheel on this. I don't think I can turn it without RCS. Oh, and I don't have RCS. Well, that was clever of me. I have RCS ports. But no RCS fuel. Very creative. Okay, 486. Good enough. So now all our Jewel missions are nicely situated and on their approach to Jewel, tight approach to Jewel, we can now turn to Duna. Alright, so see you there. And here it is, our proud Duna mission. Two landers, the, the works if you will. And we would like to get a better approach to the red planet. Uh, this seems like a very different approach than I thought we were getting. I didn't realize we were on a crash course. Huh. This seems, well, you know how it is with Girl Space Program and Time Warping sometimes. Uh, but this is quite a bit different and I can't click on the orbit. Typical. No, no. 
Okay, let's take care of some other business first. I want to move uh, two of the crew members to the landers, and that's going to be a tricky thing for me to do. Let's see now, where is the... Oh, in the dark. Okay, well, let's 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 rotate this. Okay, so now both the crew hatches are on this side. This one's somewhat obstructed by a strut, though I don't think that's going to be a problem. Where are they going to come out of? Please don't tell me they're on this side. Yes, they are. Okay, maybe we can get that a little bit further into light. Not really. Okay, Mac and Kermin. Oh, should I really? Uh, maybe I shouldn't uh, move them until. Well, I, I can't move them when they've decoupled. That's that's not gonna happen. Yeah, I guess I have to move them. Well, I don't have to move them right now, but it's might as well be done. Okay. Uh oh, I think I've crashed. Oh, don't crash right when. Oh, crud. So. I'm back after the game crashed and it looks like they put Mac and Kermin back inside. That's handy. But yeah, that was strange. Uh, I don't often get crashes in the stock version of KSB. Obviously in the modded version I get crashes all the time uh, if I'm, you know, hitting the RAM limit. But yeah, okay, let's try this again. Okay. Looks like we're all good. Okay, don't float away, don't float away. Um, right. Okay. Okay, no, uh, not quite. All right. See now, if they're in there, I can see them. I don't know why I wasn't able to see the portraits of Bill and Bob when they were in the science lab. Now, Ed Ball Kerman's got a. Okay, so this this was Mackin, right? Uh, come on. Hello. Why? Oh well, Mackin, yeah. Eball Kerman goes into the other one. That's quite a longer trip. Let's see if I can manage that without losing him. Oh, forward, forward. Up. Up. Okay, can you... I never press F in time. Okay, they have been transferred. All right. What? Okay, hold on. First of all, why didn't I do a little EVA report? Must do EVA re report. Excellent. Uh, yes, transmit the data. Well, no, keep the data with you. Board. And review stored data. Now transmit. Ooh. We really should pack more batteries, yeah. Okay, but uh, I didn't really see you over there. I was paying too much attention to the electric charge, but I think we've got that one. 
We should... Do we have Mystery Goo up here? I don't think so. Yeah, so let's see now. Mystery Goo. Guess we'll do one here. Seems reasonable. Uh, keep that data. We'll have him EVA out to grab it. And he'll probably also have to grab the one from this materials bay. Actually, let's have him do that. Um, hate to have you EVA so soon after your previous EVA, but can you grab that yet? Okay, no. Okay, collect data. Remove data. Oop, that's close enough, right? Yes. Uh, I didn't really... Did I get it? No. Yeah. Okay, Ford. Ford. No, okay, well, bumping into things is better than flying off into the middle of nowhere. All right, so he's he's collected those. That's great. Hi, Overduna. No worries. Crew report. Hi, Overduna. Great. Transmit that. Anything that we'd get a hundred percent from if we just transmit it right away, definitely should transmit. Uh, to thermometer readings. Do we have thermometers somewhere? Don't tell me. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a thermometer. Okay, log temperature. Okay, can't be done right now. All right. Okay, let's see now. After the crash, uh, we've we've restored the path that I thought we were gonna have. So that's interesting. I guess maybe whatever glitch caused the path to be wrong also caused the crash. Uh, it doesn't let me put a maneuver node anywhere close just gives me one over there but that'll get the right direction in at least so I want to flatten out so that I can encounter Ike well we've got it nice and level and we're reading 12.7 kilometers on the periapsis uh, obviously I'm not gonna do this one because that costs more than it should. But I am gonna aim in that direction and try and get close to that number. But I think I'm gonna have to look online at the error breaking calculator to figure out exactly where I want to be. I don't want to lose my Kerbals so we're going to look on the error breaking calculator to see where I should be error breaking based on my current approach to Duna. But I'll do this macro burn first. Mm, let me correct the inclination and then... Now we're crashing into Duna, but that's... That's fine. That's good. But uh, we need to figure out exactly how far I need to be. So. Let me uh, pause and then I'll come back to you with that number. Okay, full disclosure, I needed to actually boost my orbit a little bit uh, using RCS, uh, RCS because the error breaking calculator needed an actual periapsis and I couldn't be crashing into the planet. So I brought my periapsis to 12,730, which is pretty good considering I typed in all the numbers into error breaking calculator and it told me 12,000. 400 and something. I, I don't really care about the other two digits because there's no way I'm going to hit it that accurately. Anyway, actually this is pretty much what I'll go for. So I'm satisfied with this and uh, we will we will proceed. Let us continue in. Okay, at this point I'm going to orient retrograde. does not seem to be that direction. 
Uh, probably, let's see. Okay. Let's check to make sure everything is still all right. Good. Okay. Action Group 1 is the solar panels, is it? Yeah. Yeah, let's retract those now. We've still got the ones that are always open on here. That should do fine. Okay. Well, all the guys are... Uh are thrilled to be here. Let's hope it all goes well for them. Strictly speaking, we don't actually need to aero break. We've got a lot of fuel here that we really don't have any any business with. We really don't need so yeah that's that's definitely true we've got uh we've got the resources to get into orbit around duna without aero braking oh well this is the mission mode we've chosen so that's what we're gonna go with Okay, it's finally slowing us down now. The atmosphere is finally thick enough to produce some some appreciable effect on our speed. No re-entry effects though yet. Okay, we're going up. Still haven't made orbit yet, but it uh, looks like our our path is wrapping around. And yes, that's orbit. Ooh, very close. Oh, uh, oh, sort of an I can counterish thing that went on right there. Uh, not another one. Okay, but we certainly know, well, getting an Ike encounter is trivial. Okay, orbit is settling down. Looks like we'll get about a thousand kilometers. Perhaps a little bit less than that. And we'll have to boost at our apoapsis in order to have a safe orbit for further maneuvers. After all, we have to do the docking between the command module and the Ike lander. That'll be the first order of business. Uh, well, let's do a few things first. Uh, crew report. We can transmit that. Uh, though we should extend solar panels now. We are definitely not in the thick part of the atmosphere. Okay, crew report was good. Mm, I guess an EVA report could be okay. Let's wait till we get out of the atmosphere. It'll still be near Duna, but I don't want to be under the physical time warp when we do the EVA. Oh, uh, Ike eclipsing the sun? I was wondering why we didn't have enough uh, electric charge. So let's get into a stable orbit. Okay, we are out of the physical time warp range, so let's have... Uh, I keep forgetting who's in which one. 
Okay, let's have Mitgun do the EVA report here. Okay, keep data, board, and now I want you to transmit that. Excellent. Lots and lots of science so far. Good, good. And yeah, continue on to Applapsis. Hopefully, Ike will. Well, we're gonna go on to the dark side. But there, there we go. Let's charge replenished. And then diminished on the dark side again. This is a bit of a problem, actually. Really didn't pack enough batteries. I hope the rockets on the landers can provide electric charge for them. I don't think they have enough solar panels. Okay, so boosting orbit. Yeah, okay, let's boost a little bit more. Okay. Should be good. Yeah, 62 will be fine. Now... Uh, it's pretty good light. Okay, well, I think we need to do the dicey business of the docking here. Um, hmm... Tricky, tricky, tricky. Oh, do I really want to do this? It's so... Okay. Uh, well, let's open this screw hatch first. Open shield. Alright. Okay, now... I need to switch to this and I want to decouple node right now I want this portion to well, RCS up and away from that RC oh wow look at that okay uh, stop depleting RCS yeah I'll eventually drift away from that okay good um, you target that spin around And, well, yes, activate your engine. And let's see. Okay, good. We've still got monoprop here. Okay, there we are. The first of many merry dockings, I'm sure. So, what I think needs to happen is that this whole thing is now going to... We're going to control from here, just to get the right direction on things. And since we've still got so much Delta V sitting around here, this whole thing is going to get an Ike encounter. We're going to boost to an Ike encounter. We're going to then drop this portion off, the Ike lander and the command module, off into orbit around Ike. Yeah, and then we'll bring this back into a tight orbit around Duna, and then bring it to down to a landing for the Duna lander. 
So that's the plan. Let's try and get an Ike encounter. Shouldn't be too hard. I'm not really looking to be hyper efficient about it. Just want to get it done. Again, because we have so much fuel. I don't really want to be boosted into some wacky orbit though. Whoa. I don't even know what that orbit means. Okay, uh, this will be good. Yeah, I can see this. Okay, no, we've got... Uh, we've lost... Oh, there we go. Alright, yeah, let's try and do something like this. This looks good. It looks like I'll be making the... Let, let me get this on its trajectory. Whoa, okay, well this is very wiggly. And we'll be making the landings in the next episode. Mitgun seems to be the only one worried. Who was Mitgun? Mitgun was the one in the top, right? Yeah. I wonder why he's worried. Maybe because of the wiggles. We lost the struts once we decoupled, so this uh, some of the strutting is no longer present. Okay, I think... Ooh, oh, wow. Wobbly. Uh, it's close enough to the maneuver node. It's fine. It's fine. Uh... Let's let's throttle very very cautiously here, just to prevent things from wiggling too much. Oh no! Ah, oh, what a waste! I had this engine still active. Okay, well, good thing I throttled cautiously. Let's see now. Uh, let's transfer fuel up. Okay, let's see now. 78, 91? I think we can get a little bit closer to Duna here. Ah, oh, that's okay. Alright. Still plenty of fuel. Okay, so what we're going to do is, well, I wonder if we are considered low over Duna. Let's get to periapsis, this periapsis and see if we can do the materials bay. Uh, the science junior, right? What the heck is... Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's that? Um, oh, uh, it must be the must be the decoupler. Okay. Wonder why it's. Hmm. Why is it even showing up? I don't have debris selected. It thinks it's not debris. Curious. Okay, I'm gonna have 
Well, uh, well, we can just see here. We don't have to EVA him just yet. All right, we're, we're still high over Duna, so we can't do it just yet. We'll have to wait until uh, we've passed Ike with this and we're on the return trip with the Duna lander in order to do that materials bay and grab that. Okay. Hmm, right. Well, I think this is a good time to to end this episode. We will continue with our activities in the next one where I expect to land on Ike and Duna. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.